Hi, um, I'm Masumi Sugiyama. I'm presenting my results of my master's thesis, optimal relaxation weights for multi-grade reduction in time. So based on current trends in computer architectures, faster computer speeds must come from increased parallelism rather than increased clock speeds. One approach to achieve parallelism in time is with multi-grid. We consider the scheme known as multi-grid reduction in time. So M-grid is a full multi-level method, which means that there is a hierarchy of coarse grid in temporal domain. For example, level zero is the original grid, and level three is the coarsest grid. For the purpose of analysis, we focus on the two-level method. So now <clears throat> let us consider a linear system of ordinary differential equations with time t that goes from zero to capital T. The temporal domain is divided into n sub t number of subintervals with a constant space in delta t. A one-time step discretization method is defined by u sub no is equal to g sub no at the initial time step. For the time step from one to capital N sub t, approximate solution at j, which is u sub j, is computed based on the approximate solution u sub j minus one at the previous time step. Uh, here, phi is time independent. This is equivalent to solving the system of equations. M-grid solves this system iteratively with the combination of relaxation and error correction from a cost grid. So now we create a coarser grid from the original fine grid using the factor m. As an example, let m is equal to four. The first cost grid point is capital T sub zero. After four sub intervals, since m is equal to four, we have the new coarse grid point capital T sub one and so on. They are called C points. And points that are not C points are called F points. And these C points induce a coarser time discretization. The coarser time discretization is equivalent to the following system of equations. The size of a delta it's much smaller than the matrix A as shown in the previous slide. P to the M is usually approximated by something much cheaper, P delta. Then the matrix A delta is approximately equal to the matrix P delta, which has P delta instead of P to the M. So with the partition of F and C points, there are two types of relaxation. F relaxation updates F points based on C point values. C relaxation updates each C point, C point based on the previous F point. F and C relaxations correspond to the block Jacobi method. Emigrate uses unitary relaxation weights. It means that the weight for F relaxation, omega one, and the weight for C relaxation, omega two, are equal to one. In this research, we applied non-unitary weights. 
we are interested in choosing the optimal relaxation weights since it improves the convergence rate and therefore the efficiency of computation. Weighted relaxation has a long history for improving the convergence of spatial multi methods. Therefore, such way selection can be beneficial for m grid as well. Our numerical results demonstrate our improved convergence rate and lower iteration count. So because we are interested how good approximate solution is to the exact solution, we want to know how error propagates from iteration to iteration. And let's fix omega one is equal to one and modify omega two. Uh, from a new convergence analysis we conducted, the two-level error propagator for weighted relaxation is defined as the expression in the red box. The capital P is an interpolation operator. One, ap one application of capital P yields the exact solution at F points, leaving the residual equal to zero at this point. Capital S of I is a restriction operator that maps two C points. And this error propagator can be analyzed on the close grid, and it becomes the expression in the red box. The matrix form of this error propagator can be written in terms of phi and phi delta. So now let the eigenvalues of phi and phi delta be lambda gamma and mu gamma respectively. So gamma goes from one to the number of points in space. So applying these in the previous matrix and doing some algebra, we derived the theoretical convergence estimate for weighted relaxation. Unfortunately, uh, this did not turn out to be sharp. Uh, by simplifying in a different way, we could, de we could derive a sharper estimate. In our numerical experiment, we used the non-unitary weight, omega one is equal to one, and modified omega two. We explored three weight types, uh, real, imaginary, and complex values, and used the following model problems, heat, heat equation, linear advection equation, and advection with grid dependent dissipation equation. So questions we had are, does this theoretical estimate help to predict a good omega-2 for the two-level method? Does the optimal omega-2 for the two-level predict a good omega-2 for multi-level method? Is using non-unitary weights beneficial? Is there a universal weight? And what is the best type of weight? So first, let's look at the one-dimensional heat equation with the following setup and conditions. Here, we used backward time center space scheme for discretization. These plots are for the two-level method with a cosine factor m is equal to two and the problem size 291 spatial points by 4,097 temporal points. The left plus shows the convergence rate with respect to omega two. The blue dot line is the original theoretical estimate and the 
red dot line is the sharper theoretical estimate. The green line is the experimental convergence rate. From this theoretical estimate, the optimal weight for omega-2 is 1. However, the experimentally optimal weight is 1.3. So unfortunately, the theoretical estimate does not predict a good omega-2 for 2 level. The right plot shows the iteration counts. And we see the iteration counts are the same when omega-2 is equal to 1 or 1.3. The table compares the convergence rate and iteration count with various coordinate factor M and the problem sizes, and two-level method or multi-level method we cycle. And for each entry, the convergence rate is listed on the left column, and iteration count is listed with parentheses. In the previous slide, we had the plots or graphs for the two level, m is equal to two, and problem size 291 by 4097. For unitary weights, the convergence rate is 0 0.049, and iteration count is seven. For non-unitary weight with omega two is equal to 1.3, we have the convergence rate 0 0.036 and iteration count is 7. So using the same optimal weight to the multi-level method under the same conditions. So now the convergence rate is 0 0.092 and the iteration count is 8. So the optimal Omega 2 for two level method predicted a good omega 2 for multi level. So now, if we compare these with the data for unitary weights, we see that the convergence rates and iteration counts are better when non unitary weights are used. So in fact, omega-2 is equal to 1.3 worked well for various problem sizes and cosine factor m. And in this case, this can be a universal weight for this. This can be a universal weight. Since we have better results for non-unitary weights, using non-unitary weights is beneficial. And we could save about 10 to 14% of iterations. So now let's look at imaginary value. The theoretical estimate and experimental convergence rate shows the optimal weight is near zero. So in a way, we can say the theoretical estimate predicted a good omega 2 for two level, but not sharp. Uh, from the box in the table of non-unitary weight, the optimal weight for multi-level with m is equal to is 0.6i, with, with the shown convergence rate and iteration count. Comparing this with the data for unitary weight, we could conclude that using non-unitary weight does not contribute to a better performance. Therefore, using imaginary value weight is not beneficial. Now, uh, let's look at complex value. The x-axis is real value, and y-axis is imaginary value. So colors are the convergence rate, the darker, color is, the better the convergence rate is. From the theoretical estimate, the optimal weight is near one. The experimentally optimal weight is 1.3 plus zero i, which is real value. 
uh, the theoretical estimate does not predict a good omega-2 for the two-level method. The, the optimal way for the multi-level method was 1.3 plus 0.6i, which produced the slightly smaller convergence rate than omega-2 is equal to 1.3, but the iteration counts are still the same. The summary for this section is the theoretical estimate does not predict a good omega-2 for two-level. The optimal omega-2 for the two-level method predicted a good omega-2 for multi-level. Using non-unitary weight is beneficial. And there is a possibility to have a universal weight. And best type of weights are real for complex values depending on problems. So now I will move on to one dimensional advection equation. So backward time center space scheme is used for linear advection. And backward time upwind difference scheme is used for advection with grid dependent dissipation. The plots in this and next sections are for the two level method with m is equal to two and problem size 1025 by 1025. So from the theoretical estimate, the optimal weight is one, but the experimental, experimental optimal weight is 1.8. The iteration count for omega two is equal to 1.8. It's less than that for omega two is equal to one point zero. From the previous slide, the optimal way for the problem was one point eight. The convergence rate is zero point three three to three, and the iteration count is fourteen. Now let's look at the data for the multi-level method under the same conditions. The optimal weight is not 1.8, but it is 1.5. So the optimal weight for the two-level method does not predict a good omega-2 for the multi-level method. So comparing these data to the data for unitary weights, non-unitary weights give better convergence rates and iteration counts. So we could say about six to nine percent of iterations for the two level method and about 15 to 24 percent for the multi level method. So it is beneficial to use non unitary weights. Uh, how about having a universal weight? The right table shows the values of optimal weight are different depending on conditions. So it is difficult to have a universal weight. The summary for this section is the theoretical estimate does not help to predict a good omega-2 for the two-level method. Also, the optimal omega-2 for the two-level method does not predict a good omega-2 for the multi-level method. So using non-unitary weights, it's beneficial. And it is difficult to have a universal weight. And the best type of weight is real value. Uh, even though we explored imaginary and complex values, we do not find any benefit using them. So lastly, I will move on to the one-dimensional advection equation with the grid dependent dissipation. From the theoretical estimate, the optimal way is one, but the experimentary optimal way is 1.9. The iteration counts are the same when omega two is equal to one or 1.9. From the previous slide, 
the optimal weight was not 1.9. The optimal weight for the multi-level method is not 1.9, but 1.6. So the optimal weight for the two-level method does not predict a good omega-2 for the multi-level. So comparing these to the data for unitary weight, non-unitary weights give better results. So we could save about 6% of iterations for the two-level method and about 10 to 20% for the multi-level method. So it is beneficial to use non-unitary weights. Similar to linear advection equation, the optimal weight changes depending on conditions. So it is difficult to have a universal weight. The summary for this section is similar to the results of a linear advection equation, except the percentage reduction of iteration counts. The conclusion for this research is that theoretical estimate does not help to predict the good omega-2 for two-level method. The optimal omega-2 for the two-level method predicted a good omega-2 for the multi-level method for heat equation, but not for the advection equations. So for heat equation, it is possible to have a universal weight. However, it is difficult to have a universal weight for advection equations. Non-unitary weights improve the convergence rate and reduce the iteration count. For heat equation, about 10 to 15 percent, and for advection equation, it was about 6 to 24 percent. The best type of weights are real for complex values, depending on problems for heat equation, and real value for other vector equation. Thank you.